Welcome to this psychology lecture series. In this video, we are going to talk about some of the experimental designs such as randomized block designs, repeated measures design and Latin square designs. A randomized block design is an experimental design where the experimental units are in groups called blocks. The treatments are randomly allocated to the experimental units inside each block. When all treatments appear at least once in each block, we have a completely randomized block design. Otherwise, we have an incomplete randomized block design. Let us take a look at an example to understand this. Here, three categories of students are given complex treatment to score more marks in the exams. The values are given below. We have to code the values. To do that, we are choosing a value 80 which seems like the median value in the group. Reducing these values to these numbers will help us solve the problem easily. With the simplified values, we are moving on to find the degrees of freedom. To find the degrees of freedom for the row, we have to subtract number of rows minus 1 which gives us 3 minus 1 equal to 2 and to find for the columns degrees of freedom, we have to subtract number of columns from 1 which gives us 4 minus 1, 3 and next we have to calculate our residual using this formula which gives us 6. With our alpha as 0 0.05, now we can find our f critical value for row and column in the f table. We have to take the degrees of freedom of the row and the residual value that is 2 and 6 and the values corresponding to 2 and 6 is 5.14 and to calculate the f critical value for the column we have to take the degrees of freedom value for the column and our residual which is 3 comma 6 which gives us the critical value 4.76 next we have to find the correction factor to find that we have to first calculate total for each row and total for each column and calculate the grand total in our case which it gives 0 and the number of variables is equal to 12 with that we can calculate our correction factor which gives us 0 next we have to calculate the sum of the squares of the total to do that we have to square each values of the rows and column and find row total and column total and find the grand total for that and we have to subtract that value with our correction factor if we do that we will get our sum of the squares total value as 20 next we have to calculate the sum of the squares of the row to do that we have to take each row's total value and divide it by the number of values in each row if we do that we will get our value as 12.5 and we have to subtract our correction factor value with this value. As our correction factor value is 0, we will get our sum of the squares of the row value as 12.5. Next, we have to calculate the sum of the squares of the column value. To do that, we have to get the total value for each column and divide it by the number of values in each column. If we do that, we will get our value as 1.99 and if we subtract the correction factor value from that we'll get our sum of the squares of the column value as 1.99 with that we can calculate our sum of the squares of the residual value to do that we have to subtract the sum of the squares of the row and sum of the squares of the column value from the sum of the squares of the total value if we do that we'll get our sum of the squares of the residual value as 5.51. Next, we have to find the mean of the sum of the squares for the row value. To do that, we have to divide the sum of the squares of the row by the degrees of freedom of row. And if we do that, we'll get our mean of sum of squares value as 6.25. And to find the mean of the sum of the squares of column value, we have to divide the sum of the squares of the column value with the degrees of freedom of column value. If we do that, 
we'll get our value as 0 0.6633. And to find the mean of the sum of the squares of residual error, we have to divide the sum of the squares of residual error by the degrees of freedom of residual error. If we do that, we'll get our value as 0 0.9183. Next, we have to calculate the F ratio for row and column. To find the F ratio for row, we have to divide the mean of the sum of the squares of row value by the mean of the sum of the squares of residual error. And if we do that, we'll get our value as 6.806. And to find the F value for column, we have to divide the mean of the sum of the squares of column value by the mean of sum of squares of residual error. If we do that, we'll get our value as 0 0.7223. Next, let us take a look at another experimental design that is repeated measures design. A repeated measures design is a design where repeated measurements are made on the same subject. There are a number of ways in which treatments can be assigned to living subjects especially. Repeated measures design may be categorized into two types. They are ordinary repeated measure in which patients are assigned a single treatment and the results are measured over time. Next one is the crossover design in which the patients are assigned all treatments and the results are measured over time. The important factor that sets crossover design apart from the usual type of experiment is that the same patients are in the control group and all of the treatment groups. For example, a patient undergoing a specific treatment is measured before the treatment and after the treatment. The next experimental design is the Latin square designs. Latin square or Greco Latin square are similar to randomized block designs. This blocking design has two orthogonal blocking variables. This experimental design can be used to control the random variation of two factors. The design is arranged with an equal number of rows and columns so that all combinations of possible values from the two variables can be tested multiple times. This design is used to reduce the effect of random factors. The following is an example of a four treatment Latin square. In this table, the four treatments are represented by four letters and the letters are arranged in such a way so that each letter occurs only once within each row and each column. Four factors at four levels each would normally require 256 experimental units, but this design requires only 16, which is a reduction in experimental units to almost 94%. I hope you like this video. Please share these videos with everyone who are preparing for this exam. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.